Bless it always, bless it always, for the arms of God surround us, and let our joy be so triumphant, that we rest in God and say amen. Bless it always. Bless it always for the arms of God surround us and let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. That we rest in God and say amen. Thank you, Bill. 
Well, greetings and happy Easter. Happy Easter, Peggy. <laughs> All you little bunnies. Uh, I'm Peggy Henriksen, and it's my privilege to be uh, your service leader today. So welcome to, to all of those of you who are here, those who are on their way, and those of you who are watching online. I suspect a number of people maybe they might have family things <laughs> going on, and so they want to watch online and be ready for their celebration. Tony. Hey, Tony. Welcome, Hello. Tony. So let's take a few minutes for our opening prayer. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so and quiet your mind. As we bask in the high vibrations of this holy day, we can choose to let go of our limiting beliefs, fears, and doubts that plague our mortal existence. We can open our minds and hearts to what our teacher and way shower Jesus proclaimed for us that we are eternally loved and unlimited, that we are blessed and we are divine. For this, we are beyond grateful. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Before we go on, I must answer a question that I'm sure has been burning in your mind. What uh, do the Easter Bunny and eggs have to do with the resurrection? Please pardon this detour, but it's just too good not to share. <laughs> okay, first the bunny. Rabbits have been associated with fertility for centuries. During medieval times, rabbits repro reproduced so freely, it was widely believed they were hermaphrodites. And the ability to reproduce without loss of virginity led many religious leaders to associate the rabbit with the Mother Mary. Wow. Who knew? Uh, now, eggs. Eggs have been used as symbols of fertility by many cultures and religions around the world, including Christianity. But it wasn't until medieval times that Christian Europeans started correlating eggs to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Early Christians made the egg a symbol of the resurrection um, because the outside empty shell was a metaphor for Jesus' tomb. And the outside of the shell is dead like the tomb, but a new life is hidden inside. So eventually it became common practice to abstain from eating eggs during Lent, <laughs> and eggs became a prized commodity. Christians started painting them, and children in England would go door to door asking for these decorated eggs on the Saturday before Lent. And the tradition spread to Christian populations around the world. As Christianity began to spread across Europe, the pagan celebration of the vernal equinox began to merge with the observance of Christ's resurrection, since they both occurred about the same time. And as eggs and rabbits were already symbolically important in Christianity, and decorated eggs were valued by children, German Lutherans took the next logical step and invented the Easter Bunny, <laughs> <laughs> who brought decorated eggs to children. So now you know what the Easter Bunny and eggs have to do with the resurrection. <laughs> And God bless our divine gift of imagination. <laughs> our next step, of course, is to decorate the bunny. Yes! Oh, <laughs> there you go, decorate the bunny. So now's a good time for me to welcome Bill Mann, who is our musician today. Thank you, Bill, for being here. Happy Easter. And thank you also to our Minister of Record, Reverend Phil Smithstead, for being with us on this blessed day and sharing his message, A Personal Resurrection. And I have a feeling he doesn't mean just his own, so <laughs> right. we will listen carefully. So welcome, Phil. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay, let's have our opening song, Bill, please. Alive, aware, and awake. That can be our mantra. 
Joyous and enthusiastic for life continue we'd like to welcome and honor those of you who are new to our service either in person or online with a special blessing please join me we, we offer, offer you peace, peace love, love and, and friendship. friendship we, we bless, bless you, you and we're, we're glad you're, you're here, here. <clears throat> Um, if you are new to Unity and want to have a little more information about it, there's our uh, big envelopes over on that small table by the door with uh, information about Unity. And you're welcome to take one as you leave. Now Lynn will ring our Tibetan bells, read the daily word, bless our prayer box, and lead us in our affirmations. We now move deeper into spirit with the reading of the Daily Word. The word for today, Sunday, March 31st, 2024, is Arise. I rise to accept new life and renewal. Jesus rose above all limitations, transcending darkness to light and death to new life. His overcoming death is the ultimate inspiration and example for humankind, a precious gift of hope and renewal. This Easter, I gratefully accept my renewal as I awaken to the call of the divine. I turn to the Christ presence within me and discover new life and energy, lifting me into higher awareness and understanding of spiritual truth. 
In doing so, I leave behind that which held me in bondage. I rise above limiting beliefs, habits, and actions. With unwavering faith, I rise to accept inspiring new possibilities and the fullness of God's glorious life, love, and grace. And the verse today is from 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Again, the word for today is arise. Let's now bring our attention to the prayer box. I invite you to silently add your own name and the names of anyone in your heart or on your mind who may need prayer support. We know that the truth behind all appearance of disharmony is the divine and perfect presence of God. We call forth within all people the wisdom and strength, the love and peace, the wholeness and vitality of this presence. We declare that divine healing power and wisdom is restoring, healing, and harmonizing our world and guiding our leaders for the highest good of all in this very moment. We bless our global family and hold us all in the light of love and peace. We affirm that the requests in our prayer box and in our hearts and on our minds are being resolved in divine timing for the highest good of all concerned. May the love of God enfold us. May the peace of God uphold us. May the wisdom of God inspire us and help us to know in our hearts that all is well. And so it is. Please join us for our affirmation for the day together. The same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. And our affirmation for our spiritual center. Together, we are a prosperous, thriving, inspired, connected community, growing spiritually and manifesting our dreams and goals in an energy of love, peace, and joy. And so it is. And our core values, together. We are spirit-led, joy-filled, loving, accepted, and respectful. Namaste.
Good morning, everyone. Now let's take a few minutes for a time of an Easter meditation. You may want to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. And take a deep breath. The message this morning is all about how to have a personal resurrection. So is there anything in your life that has seemed dead or beyond recovery? Your happiness, your prosperity, your inner peace, your wellness, the love in your life, your self-expression, your Christ self. Jesus came to show us the truth of our divinity, our oneness with God. Today is a day to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, and our own as well. If there is any part of your life that has seen beyond recovery, take time now to remind yourself. I am an expression of all the qualities of God divine love, divine power of creation, divine wisdom, and divine aliveness. And remind yourself as well <clears throat> that the same mind, heart, and spirit which Jesus demonstrated are also in me. Our co-founder Charles Fillmore in his book Keep a True Lent said, the resurrection takes place in us every time we rise to Jesus' realization of oneness with God's life and love. A new flood of life, energy, comes to us as we do. So today let yourself rise to Jesus' realization of oneness with God's life and love. As you do, feel a flood of new energy filling your whole being. Let's know together silently. Today every part of my life is resurrected as I realize that God in me fills me with an abundance of all good. Let's know that once more. Today every part of my life is resurrected as I realize that God in me fills me with an abundance of good. <clears throat> Take time now to open your mind and to open your heart to the love and the wisdom that is within you and all around you. Take time to feel spirit filling you with new energy, new ideas, new life, new love, new abundance for a few moments in the silence. Now, as you return to the outer world, remind yourself again that you are an expression of all that God is. 
and let yourself feel as grateful as you can to God in you for this knowing of your divinity, your oneness with God, and your oneness with your older brother Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. <clears throat>
not wishing to suppress creativity, the teacher said, well, yes it is, but I had something a little different in mind. A little girl said, I know. It's the day that we dress up in our new clothes and get baskets from the Easter Bunny. The teacher said, that's right, but I had something else in mind a little bit more important. Then one little boy said, Jesus died on a cross and his friends buried him in a tomb. The teacher thought, man, somebody actually knows. <coughs> the little boy continued. And then three days later, he walked out of the tomb. The teacher said, yes, yes, go on. And the little boy said, and if he sees his shadow, we have six more weeks of winter. <laughs> Well, as you know, this is a day to celebrate. It's a day to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And it's also a day to celebrate God's resurrecting power in each one of us. So if you can accept it, <clears throat> Easter is also your story. So I'd like to ask you to join me again in affirming the same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. Would you know that with me? The same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. This past week, many Christians have been focused on the cross. They've sung songs like, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And they feel very guilty, believing that Jesus died for their sins. Even though Jesus himself never, ever taught this. Bishop John Shelby Spong, one of my favorite mainline Bible uh, scholars, said, Christianity must let go of this idea that Jesus died for our sins. It generates so much guilt in people that they have to project that guilt onto somebody. So either they, have to, either they will let it go or Christianity will die. In fact, the only time Jesus said why he was here was when he said in John 10, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. Actually, the guilt that tradition, traditional Christians felt this week is something that has lived in many. It's the guilt any of us feel when we believe that we're separate from God, when we believe that we're only human in that state we think we have actually killed the Christ in us. Because in unity, we know the Christ in us is our inherent divinity. But there's good news today. The good news is the Christ in us can't be killed. One poet called it the spark of divinity that can be dimmed, but never quite extinguished. So how do we fan that inner spark back into a flame. As I said last week, Jesus said, whoever would be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. First of all, notice that he did not say worship me. He said follow me. But this statement has been a source of fear for many who ask, do I have to be crucified in order to follow Jesus? Well, Here's what Jesus said in A Course in Miracles. He said, you are not asked to be crucified, which was part of <coughs> my own teaching contribution. You are merely asked to follow my example in the face of much less extreme temptations to misperceive and not to accept them as false justifications for anger. He continued, <coughs> remember always that what you believe you will teach. Believe with me, and we will become equal as teachers. Then in another place, the Course goes on to say, your resurrection is your reawakening. Then Jesus says this, I am the model for rebirth. But rebirth is itself merely the dawning on your mind of what is already within it. 
Once again, that phrase, to take up one's cross, is simply an Aramaic figure of speech. It means <coughs> to die to our small sense of self, our ego mind, our survival mind, <coughs> so that our real self can be resurrected. Jesus' primary teaching throughout his ministry was how to, how to live in heaven here and now <coughs> by being transformed. He said in one place, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He also might have said, unless a seed dies to being a seed, it will never become a mighty oak tree. Or he might have said, unless an egg dies to being an egg, it will never become a soaring eagle. Or he might have said, unless a caterpillar dies to being a caterpillar, it will never become a beautiful butterfly. Earlier, before this week, when Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus had died, he said to Lazarus' sisters, Lazarus isn't dead. He's only asleep. He said to the sisters, your brother will rise again. <clears throat> they said, yes, Lord. We know, that he's only a, we know that he will rise from the dead on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he, never, well, yet shall he live. And whoever believes in me will never die. Neil Douglas Klotz, another of my famous, <laughs> famous favorite <laughs> and famous uh, Aramaic scholars and Bible teachers said that phrase... Whoever believes in me is much better translated as whoever believes like me. Eric Butterworth, one of our most beloved unity ministers and authors, said, Jesus is not the great exception. Jesus is the great example. So what was Jesus' example as he faced his attackers? First, with Pontius Pilate. Pilate said, Speak up, man. Don't you know that I have the power of life and death over you? Jesus said, Pilate, you have no power at all except that which is given to you by my Father in heaven. In today's language, in today's metaphors, in today's figures of speech, that was Jesus saying, Pilate, this is all my idea. You, in fact, are an extra in my movie. This was Jesus owning his power of creation. Then on the cross, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, la masa shabachthani. This phrase is so difficult to translate that it's the only phrase in the entire Bible that's first written in Hebrew and then in English. Dr. Rocco Erico, another Aramaic and Hebrew Bible scholar said, Jesus was not crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Rather, he was saying, for this was I left, for this was I kept. This is my destiny. It was a cry of victory. And then also on the cross, Jesus said, he had words of forgiveness for those who were crucif crucifying him. Marianne Williamson, in her wonderful book, A Return to Love, said, Can you imagine how different history would be if instead of Jesus forgiving those who were crucifying, he would have said, I really hate you guys. <laughs> and then finally, on the cross, there were his words of complete surrender. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then, on Easter Sunday, we have that wonderful resurrection. Today is a day to celebrate not only Jesus' resurrection, but our own as well. Our personal resurrection always begins with spiritual vision. All that first Easter, people kept having the experience that they couldn't see the risen Jesus. They kept looking down at the tops of their shoes. First, a little aside. 
a famous Norwegian comedian once said, and I can say this because I'm Norwegian, said, he said, do you know what the definition is of a Norwegian optimist? He stares at your shoes. <laughs> I know, that's bad. But anyway, so back to the story. <clears throat> First we have Mary Magdalene in the garden by the tomb. She thought she was talking to the gardener, and she said to him, They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And then it says, And she looked up. And when she looked up, her eyes were opened, and she saw. And she said, Rabboni. Of course. That's what happens when we look up. I came across a story the other day of... Hall of, this is, this, I'll read this to you. The Hall, Hall of Fame catcher Roy Campanella was one of professional baseball's African-American pioneers, playing with Jackie Robinson on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Campanella won three Most Valuable Player Awards in a 10-year career that was cut short by a crippling auto accident. Campanella was one of many stars on the powerful Dodgers team of the early 1950s. He was confined to a wheelchair after an accident. He had a terrible time with the fact that he could not walk anymore. He cried himself to sleep every night <clears throat> as he thought, what use am I to the world? The doctor came to him one day and said, Roy, you're not doing very well with your own healing and I need your help. You have to feel alive again. Roy said, no doctor, I just want to die. The doctor said, no Roy, you can still be a tremendous asset everywhere you go. Be a blessing to people. Get out of yourself, out of your own mind, out of your own body, and think about other people. <coughs> Live your life not just for you, but for everyone. Roy said it felt like God was talking to him. Roy is still in a wheelchair, but he says, I am more alive now than I was when I had two legs and was running around the bases. Now I make other people's lives better. Roy looked up <clears throat> and became an instrument of God's resurrection in other people's lives. Later that first Easter, on the road to Emmaus, two men were walking with Jesus and didn't recognize him. And then it says, and then they looked up and saw him for who he was. It's the same with us. When we look up, that is, when we look beyond appearances, we see ourselves and others as the divine beings that we are. Someone once said, anyone can see the seeds in an apple, but it takes a visionary to see the apples in a seed. One such visionary was a man named Jamie Escalante. There was a movie about him several years ago called Stand and Deliver. I don't know if anybody remembers seeing it. But Jamie <coughs> was hired. He was from Brazil. He was hired in Los Angeles in one of the poorest areas of town to teach math to high school students. High school students who had been drug addicts, hoodlums, you know, definitely low achievers. <laughs> He, he decided when he was hired that he was not only going to teach math, basic math, he was going to teach calculus to this group. He shared that vision with his high school principal, and the principal laughed at him and said, Jamie, don't set yourself up to fail. These are some of the lowest functioning kids there are in the whole city. Jamie stood up, looked at the principal right in the eye, and said, the student will rise to the level of the expectation of the teacher. And finally, after a silence, the principal said, all right, go ahead and give it a try. Well, he did give it a try, more than a try. And he spent that first year wrangling the students, <laughs> getting them to come early and stay late and go through a whole voluntary summer class. All the while, students were resisting him, 
telling him why he, they couldn't do it, why this was a stupid idea. But every time they said something like that, Jamie said, walk out that door and you will spend the rest of your life flipping burgers. Stay here and learn something to have a career that you can be proud of. They stayed. And not only did they stay, they learned calculus. <laughs> and every single one of them graduated from college. Jamie looked up and became an instrument of resurrection for a whole lot of people, a whole lot of kids that already had given up on life in Los Angeles. So let today be a day to celebrate Jesus' resurrection for sure, and to celebrate your own resurrection as well. Especially if you've ever felt hopeless about any aspect of your life, in that case, your divinity isn't dead, it's only asleep. And today is the day to say, and even to shout, the same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. I'll say that one more time and then ask you to join me and say it like we all really mean it. So here it is one more time. The same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. Will you know that with me? The same resurrecting power that was in Jesus is also in me. Namaste. Well, I'm on fire. Said I'm on fire. This love for God, you know, it just takes me higher. I said, I'm on fire with a love for God, it just takes me higher. I'm on fire now in my heart. This I know, in God's eyes, we all are so. We are here to bring God's love into this world, into this world. So reach out your hand, touch someone's heart. Don't be afraid now, just light that spark. Give your love the best you can. Give it again. Oh, give it again. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. This love for God takes me higher. Oh, I'm on fire with love for God. It takes me higher. Oh, I'm on fire. This love inside and spread it far, oh, and spread it wide. Every chance I get, gonna let it out. Ain't no doubt, oh, ain't no doubt. I'm on fire, I'm on fire. This love for God takes me higher. Oh, I'm on fire with love for God. Yeah, it takes me higher. I'm on fire And when my time Has finally come When my race Has been run I'll still be singing As I leave This old world This old world I'm on fire I'm on fire This love for God takes me higher oh, I'm on fire with love for God it takes me higher I'm on fire I'm on fire I'm on fire this 
love for God takes me higher. Oh, I'm on fire with love for God. It takes me higher. I'm on fire with a love for God. It takes me higher. I'm on fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's good. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Yep. I'm to look up to go higher. Yes. To be on fire. And Phil, I I love your stories. Um, I just hope I don't have to learn calculus. <laughs> It does remind me, though, of, of the way that we pray, where we see the potential and see the truth of somebody rather than their limitations. So, very good. All right, thank you both. <laughs> now it's time in our service for our love offering, and this commitment and giving is part of our community's spiritual practice to develop our trust in spirit, God, all that is, as our source and in the law of giving and receiving. So as we give our love offering from our hearts, we gratefully accept our own good in return. So please take your gift in your hands and bless it with your love. If you're one of our, the growing number of us who give electronically, please take your gift into your heart and bless it there. So let's read our love offering affirmation together. Divine love, flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. God is the soul, each of us Guiding the good, flowing divine, one in the soul, infinite blessings, praise the given as individuals or as part of a family so now it's time for all of us as a spiritual community to receive these gifts and those we've received electronically and by mail so let's feel gratitude to spirit God infinite life moving through all of us as our unlimited source please join me in this blessing thank, thank you God, God for providing all the resources we need to accomplish our mission of transforming lives. We dedicate these gifts to your service and to the blessing of our larger community through all we teach and do here at Unity of the Valley. Amen. Now for our reminders, um, speaking, oh, cute, yes. <laughs> um, speaking of transformation on April 14th Reverend Phil's message will be on the prayer of transformation which he created based on his many years of teaching spiritual transformation and that will be followed by a three hour workshop on how to use this prayer in daily life and I've seen the prayer and been the beneficiary of some of Phil's teachings, so I heartily recommend this. And I hope as many of you as possible will be able to attend that workshop. Um, it will be after our service, but there'll be time 
to have a lunch, but you have to bring your bag lunch. But we'll have fun. We'll have a picnic or something, and then we'll go to, into the workshop. And um, there's a suggested love offering for uh, is twenty five dollars. So I hope that everyone can attend. And please sign up if you want to attend, so I know how much how many handouts to make. Yes, there's a sign up sheet on the table out there. Okay, last class, and of course, in miracles for now. We'll meet tomorrow evening at 6.30 to 8.30, and we may continue it in the fall if there's interest. Um, so come if you'd like a taste of this deep spiritual teaching. And it's for both beginners and ongoing students, led by two seasoned facilitators for a love offering. And next fall we might start it up again. So on Tuesdays, we have our guided meditation live on Facebook, so tune in for your weekly booster to keep you immune from negativity. <laughs> <laughs> our next the volunteer session at Feed My Starving Children will be Thursday, April 11th at 2.30. Come and help put labels on food packets for this uh, well-respected charity in Egan. They send out food to countries all over the world really where there's need sign up sheet for that is also on the table in the hall april will be here tomorrow and it's bring a friend month so on april sundays every time you bring a friend who's new to our service or hasn't joined us for a service since we moved to our new location you and your guests can put your names in a box for a drawing that we'll have on april 28th and the lucky winners will receive a one-hour massage from trained masseuse Lori Brandt. And on that last Sunday of the month, we'll also have a special potluck. So please bring a scrumptious dish or dessert or bread or something that you like, and we'll have a feast. April 14th, that's going to be a good one, too. We have a book signing we have two of our members who are authors. Uh, Mary Berg has a new book of poetry, and she's been published uh, in the Daily Word, and I think also in the Unity magazine. And, and Bill Gernon has a new book of fun and interesting stories. I think this will be his sixth book. So they're going to have a book signing, and um, they're offering us a special um, special price for their books so please come and uh, read the bug buzz for more information about those two where we we love to have them in our spiritual family and if you'd like one-on-one -on -one prayer support after the service today prayer chaplain sherry johnson will be honored to pray with you and uh, you can meet her in the back room there which is for some reason discombobulated. I don't I think they ha had some, the snow kind of uh, poked holes in the roof. <laughs> if you notice in the hall, there are a few uh, tiles out. I, I don't see any tiles out in there, but anyway, all the furniture's kind of scattered about, but that's okay because you can just pray anyway, right? Oh, okay. Okay, over there. That's good. good. That looks like a nice, neat, tidy little corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, let's stand for our prayer for protection. Together, the light, the light of God, God surrounds us. us. We, we are, are that light. light. The love of God enfolds us. We are that love. The power of God protects us. We are that power. The presence of God watches over us. We are that presence. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever God is, we are. And all is well. Remain standing for our peace song. Thanks for being here.